Women of wisdom, have you ever felt stuck? Or maybe the idea of change has just felt so overwhelming that you find yourself feeling nervous, trapped, no judgment. I've been there. And many women often struggle with moving out of stuck and tapping into a life of freedom. And I'm so excited because today we have the one, the only amazing Alex. Alex, thank you so much for being with us today for this Wise Women feature. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. I'm excited. I'm excited. And, you know, for those of you who are new to the world of Alex, be sure to check her out. She's been in the group before under a May Momentum series. She is such an amazing and radiant speaker. And she's a music artist, transformational coach, and the founder of Creative Self Revolution in LA. Through her creative work, Alex has amassed over 50,000 social media followers. Give her some love in the chat. <laughs> and in her business, she utilizes a unique coaching process involving creativity and mindset to really enhance personal and professional development. And if that doesn't sound like a world that we could all thrive in, I don't know what does. Alex, thank you again for being here. Thank you again. And, you know, Alex, there's so much I could talk to you about because you're so wise and your experience of music, creativity, it's so unique, but tell me a little bit, what really got you to this place of creativity and really of sharing and empowering people, you know, through creativity and mindset to really step into a bigger, bolder version of themselves? What inspired you to get there? Um, it was, you know, been a kind of a long journey to get there. So an abbreviated version would be dad <laughs> I'm I've always I've always been a creative person I've danced um done theater and drawing and all kinds of different things music and I, I just so I've always had that outlet and I've always loved it and I just sort of thought everybody has this outlet it's great and that was wrong about that and so I I moved out to LA to, to do music and I loved it and I sort of like had this big dream of getting a record deal and like and I got one. And then um, I had a moment where I thought, okay, my life is solved. I have the thing that I want. And now everything is easy. And boy, was I wrong. Um, <clears throat> so, so basically everything fell apart from there. One, at the moment I thought I had everything. And, um, and so then I fell apart and I just sort of went into this downward spiral where it just everything was lost and I just couldn't, I had, I had no way to really deal with it. And so I left for a while. Um, I went back to my hometown in Ohio from LA and I leaned into my creativity again, but in a, in a different way, which was really sort of like a deep way. Um, I was digging deeper. It was like profound. And I found that I had all these healing elements and other things like that, that I hadn't really been using. <clears throat> I've been using more not a surface level, but you know, it was not, it was like the tip of the iceberg and there's all these other layers. And I realized, wow, this thing can actually do a lot. Um, and so I sort of put myself back together in a way where I felt really strong and solid and like, well, if everything falls apart again, I'm going to be okay. Whereas before it just destroyed me. And I thought, this is really cool. I want to continue to be creative, but wow, wouldn't it be awesome to help other people who have something that, you know, fell apart or they're stuck or they just lose touch with who they are because it happens to all of us at some point. Um, and there's different methods to get back to yourself. But what if I could help people be more creative and work on their mindset and all that stuff? What if I could help people, you know, have some of the wonderful experiences that I've had and I've started to help people with that. And it's just, just amazing to, to pass that along. I love so many parts of that story, you know, and I'm, I guess I'm going to work your story backwards because there are so many healing elements to creativity and thank you for really leaning into your creativity and really opening yourself up to the deeper levels of it. Because I think when people think of creativity, you know, they think of Picasso or mm -hmm. the big art exhibits. And sometimes it's not just a form of expression, which it is, but there's these deeper elements of healing that can come as we express ourselves or as we learn to tap into the other parts of ourselves. And I know that's such a powerful thing. And the story of you feeling like you have it all, you've got your dream, you're there, you've made it, and then to have it crumble, 
I can only imagine how difficult that was. And I know that so many women have that same journey of being like, this is it. I've hit my dream and it's not exactly what they thought, or it doesn't fulfill the deeper sense of meaning or feeling or anything. And I think when it comes to being true to ourselves and to our dreams, it can be really difficult. And, you know, do you have any tips around how can we be true to ourselves and to our dreams, despite living in a world that really tends to disconnect us? Yeah, I mean, I think it does happen to all of us. It could be something like um, you've been looking forward to getting married your whole life. You get married and you think now I'm going to be happy forever. And then that doesn't look the way you thought it was going to or anything where we have an expectation and the expectation isn't met. Um so I think that it really is tapping back into who you are, because sometimes we'll just start to become what everyone's telling us to be or what the society is expecting of us to be. And, and we can get to a day where we're like, this is not who I wanted to become, or this doesn't even feel authentic in me. So one of the ways to get back to that is through creative exercises, even something as simple as doing like a writing practice, um, like a daily writing practice, like morning pages, where you just get up and put whatever is in your head out on the page you just start to reconnect to who you are. And if you can reconnect to who you are, you start to understand what you want, why you want it. And you need to know all of that stuff before you can start to pursue that thing. Because if you're not even sure, because what you want right now is maybe different than what you wanted 10 years ago. So you need to connect to who it is at this moment. And so that's one of the things I love to help people with is that process, because sometimes that process can be scary or it could bring up things that it's hard to deal with by yourself. And so to have someone kind of compassionately guide you with that is, is useful. Definitely. And, you know, I love that you brought up the morning pages because that's such a powerful thing. Yeah. You know, I remember doing the morning pages, like when COVID first started and I was, you know, in that place of just confused, the world was locked down. I was in Czech Republic. So there was nine o'clock curfews. Um, and I read the artist way and it, like you said, just getting it all out first thing in the morning is such a powerful thing because it really brought me to that space of internal navigation. Yeah. And I love the, just the invitation of gentle exercises. I'm sorry. I feel like my neighbor is like blowing a bunch of leaves. And so I don't know if you can hear it, but I if can. you can just get in creative with it. <laughs> <laughs> And so thank you for, you know, for sharing such a gentle exercise. That's something that everyone can dive into. And I know that you actually have a really big event that's going to be coming up. That's going to be top, you know, talking a lot more about how we can stay true to ourselves and our dreams. Like what are the secrets and how we can express ourselves, you know, in a way that's safe and creative and authentic and there are so many questions that I have around your event, but I know that if I asked them all, it would just be another event. <laughs> <laughs> and for women who are, are really interested in learning how to reconnect to themselves and tap into their creativity or just really move from being stuck to unstuck, what would you, how would you, is it possible? I guess I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with is it possible? It's like everybody else can do it, especially if you've had your dreams and then they're not what you expected. Like you got married and it's not what you wanted. You made this big move for your life. It didn't work out the way that you wanted to. I think that can really make people feel scared, like you were saying. So how do they get over that fear and how do they believe that they can do it too? Wow. I mean, those are a lot of really beautiful questions. Um, one thing I want to say, if anybody's watching and they're like, well, this sounds nice, but I'm not creative. I just want to sort of dispel that myth. My my approach to this is that everybody is creative. Like as human beings, it is just one of the things that we have been blessed with or however you want to put it. It's just something that we have. And either you are connected to using that right now or you're not. That's all it is. It is not not some of us are creative and some of us aren't. Now, some of us are more artistic than other people. Um, and that's That can be true. And some of us has developed stuff for longer, but you can always tap into it. And it can be something like creativity can be through cooking. It can be through quilting. I mean, it, there's lots of different ways you can do it. And it's partly just shifting your mind to be like, okay, well, I am a creative person. And even just that little shift is like, oh, then you might be willing to try some things that you weren't before. And so your question, oh, go ahead. I just want to speak to that because I think that you're, it's, it's the shift. It's that mindset shift of opening up what is creativity, because again, you know, and I want to make the strong connection that you said, where it's the world gets disconnected from ourselves at some point in our lives. We just kind of forget who we are because we're living in the world of to-do lists and tasks. And I think the same thing kind of happens with creativity. 
we start to take in this narrative and this lens of what creativity is meant to look like. Well, mm -hmm. creative is music. Creativity is artistry. So I'm not creative. But when we can really start to open and expand and mindset shift around what is creativity, like looking at cooking as creativity, making a cup of coffee as creativity, showering, you know, the next time you shower, is there a way that you can be like, oh, how can I, what makes this creative? Everything that we're doing in life is creative. And just opening our pathways, you know, like you're saying, these shifts to blur the edges of the hard lines that the world has kind of put around it. Beautifully said. Wow. Blur the edges. I like that. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. And um, I mean, that's why I work on both mindset and creativity. I'd started out working more just on creativity, but I found that a lot of people were hesitant to come in because they didn't think that they could be. And so it was like, okay, well, let's actually work on that first. And then we'll kind of segue over. And you asked a question about, you know, how can people know that they can change? And I think that's a big fear. Like, will this actually work for me? If I come to this thing, am I going to have any type of transformation, even if it's just really small? And I'm, I can pretty confidently say yes to that. Um, I believe that we all can change. It is partly, again, deciding that we want to enough. Um, and we're humans, we're meant to expand and we're meant to explore and we're constantly evolving. And so we can either sort of let that evolution happen or we can be part of it, which is why um, I call my business creative self revolution because a revolution is a choice. Um, so I believe that change is, is possible. And sometimes it takes like going to an event where just somebody is, is speaking to these things that help inspire you. And then you start to feel like, well, maybe I can change. And it's just that one thing that tips you over a few percentage points and, to, and that shifts the direction that your trajectory is going. And I just want to come back to that word choice. When you said it, I got like soul shivers, chicken skin, goosebumps, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Because I think there's so, choice is such a powerful word, especially when we're talking about creativity and mindset, because we get scared. We go into that space of survival, of obligation, of I have to, or I can't. And we forget that we've got a choice in it. And I love that you're like, it's a revolution. That's a choice. It's a choice that you get to make. And the thing is a little blunt here, but no one's going to be able to make that choice for you. Mm -hmm. And I love that you brought it back. So for anybody who's thinking about tapping into creativity or having a better understanding of it, and you're like, what's the point of going to Alex's, you know, class? Cause I know it's a big thing. Like oh, it's just an hour. Like, will I be able to do it? Will I get that transformation? And I love that you spoke to that tipping point and the reminder that you have a choice. Everything you do is a choice. If you want to start tapping into creativity, moving beyond stuck, you have a choice. You have a choice on whether you want to show up to this event or not. And that's up to you. Right. And just even being open to it, not going in thinking this will change me, but just being open to the possibility that maybe it'll work and just if you're at a place where you're not totally comfortable with your life or you're, you're sort of just getting through your life rather than enjoying it, a lot of us just get into like a routine and, and we get to goalposts, you know, so we're getting like, you know, we're not enjoying the journey. We're just getting to the destination points. And I fully believe that it's the journey that's the important part. Um, and so that's what I help people with too, is to really just start to enjoy that part of life because that's most of life. Um, and, and there is a nice parallel with creativity because sometimes people think, well, you just get to that Picasso, that final drawing. Do you know how many drawings you had to do to get to that place? Like that's the, the process. And the process is important too, because you learn through that process. And I think that learning is, is it's so exciting because anytime we can learn something, it helps to build our confidence. And when we can create something, it helps to build our confidence. We made something that was never there before. And only you can do that certain thing because only you have your certain set of experiences and perspectives. Yeah. And in that space, you also, when you're, you know, engaging in creativity, like you're learning and you're expanding your brain too, you're bringing in new neural networks and patterns and we're shifting out of that what's next mentality. And I love that you brought that up, you know, because I work a lot with like the overachievers and the perfectionist and we live in that world of what's next of short-lived achievement periods. No one cares about the journey. Like even once we have this really big thing that maybe we've been spending five years on getting, as soon as we get it, we're like, and what's next. Yeah, and yeah. I love that you really spoke to that pain point because I think it's something that a lot of people don't really think about, especially around their creativity or how that mindset of what's next can really be keeping them stuck, not just in their life, but in, or in their creativity, but in their mindsets. And that's such a powerful, such a powerful thing. 
Yeah, and I, I actually work a, around perfectionism a lot too. I mean, that's something that we have in common okay. because I struggled with it. I actually made a joke with Des before then that she and I could not have gotten on this call 10 years ago. I would have been terrified that I didn't know exactly what I was going to say. And I just like could not have done it at all. I, I, mean, I wouldn't have projected that I could do it now. So it's exciting to know that we, we can change. That is not like an inherent trait. We actually can shift that if we, if we do so. It doesn't happen overnight, but you can do some work toward that. And actually... Creativity is another way to do that. Mindset shifts are obviously a way to start to change how you think about yourself and what it means to, to get something right. Um, but creativity too, is just opens up different things and you start to see that if you try things different ways, it's okay. Because the, you know, a lot of the perfectionism is if I do this and I do it wrong, I die, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so there's that fear that like deep seated, you know, primal fear that like, if we don't do this right, like, something horrible is going to happen and to start to move past that enough times then you start to realize actually I have a lot of other choices again yeah and you know I really try to adopt the motto of like when I fail like at least try and make it a creative fail so it's unique and my own um but also for the ladies who are watching this I want to just highlight you know we have these wise women Wednesday features and they're set up. We have these women who come in and yesterday due to an emergency, the original woman who was meant to be here, couldn't be here. And so I called Alex, you know, sent her a text and was like, Hey, I'd love to bring you back in, especially because I'm, I'll be there at her event. So ladies join me and, you know, check that out. I'd love to maybe talk about it to any of the women who, who are there with me. I'm in with Alex, but yeah, she was just like, yep. Let's do it. Let's spread the message of creativity. Let me give these resources and remind women that it's possible, that they've got choice and how we can really shift from feeling in that mindset of stuck into one of more expansion. So for anyone who's like, oh man, like, I don't know, they're so creative. I couldn't do it. Like they probably practice this totally on the fly. <laughs> Everything's made up. Alex had no time to prepare and she's just here in her creativity serving as a light. So thank you, Alex, for saying yes for showing up and for being the light that you are in such a world of judgment sometimes. Well, yeah, and thank you. And I do want to throw in that this workshop is a little bit different. Everybody's a little bit different and, and interesting, but my little twist on it is that I'm also a singer songwriter. And so I have my guitar behind me and in this workshop, I'm actually going to sing. So if you come, you'll get to hear some live music. You'll get some inspiration and some, you know, tangible tips and action steps that you can take, but you also get to hear some music. And so that's that's a nice little thing to have. So this yeah. is just an hour long event on the 24th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And all of that stuff is going to happen there. And Des will be there. <laughs> and I really want to highlight the fact that Alex is going to be singing. I have like this big little post-it note on my thing that's like, Alex is singing because I really want to highlight it because what I love about you incorporating singing into it is you're not just doing the creativity talk, but you're showing us the walk. And something happens, women of wisdom, when we are listening to songs, when we are feeling the vibration of music, whether it's through the internet or not, and feeling the vibration of words in the pattern of tempo and rhythm, it gets processed different in the brain and it sits differently in the nervous system. And so I love that Alex is really starting to bring in her, her amazing, you know, creativity and talent to not only share her wisdom with us. I know that you're going to be talking about, you know, three main strategies that you really use to live that creative life that you love, that you get to wake up on your own terms with, but that you're bringing it into a deeper level of healing by not just talking, but by singing. And that's so powerful and transformative and expansive. So uh, I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited too. And I would love to, I like how you spoke about all the vibration and it is processed differently. And just, I mean, I, I could talk about music forever. I just think it's just such a wonderful thing that is enhances our lives. And you can have one piece of music you listen to for the rest of your life and it continues to give you that nourishment or that excitement, or hopefully some of you have a song you put on when you need to get pumped up when you're having a, a rough time and you have that song or playlist that you put on and, and it's music that gets you to be like, okay, I can do this next thing, whatever that thing is. Yeah. I love it. Women of wisdom. I hope that you've enjoyed this. Alex, thank you so much again for coming in. And again, I'm going to be dropping a link. You can access, you know, the link to Alex's event is in the description of this. And for those of you who are like, can't seem to find it, just so you know, it's bit.ly slash dream 
underscore fearlessly. And again, that's in the event description and I'll be putting it in the comments right now so you can join us here, Alex Singh, and really start to take in some powerful, simple steps and tools to really start living a life that you love, a life that you're excited to wake up for, a strategy that Alex has used herself. So as a reminder, um, you know, Alex, I know this event is Monday, July 24th. And so Women of Wisdom, I hope to see you there. And Alex, thank you so much. Before we close this out, are there any final thoughts or messages that you'd like to share with the community? Um, I just want to highlight you for a moment because you have such a, a beautiful energy and you create such an amazing container. And I think that the women in this group are I'm sure appreciative of it. And you just, you know, you know how to, to connect people and bring people in and, and share your wisdom in a really gentle, but powerful way. And I just, I'm sure everybody here already knows that, but I just wanted to recognize you for that because it's, it's like, it's palpable when, when I'm even talking to you over Zoom. So thank you for being you. Thank you. Ooh, that gives me all the feelings and I feel like I want to cry. And so I receive that with love and gratitude. So thank you so much, Alex. And before we close this out, I love to do this thing. It's really fun and awkward where we high five each other on Zoom. Are we on the same side of the screen? Yeah, I think that's actually pretty, pretty hot high five. So thank you, Alex, so much. And Women of Wisdom, be sure to join us July 24th. You can always come back to this. And if you're like, I can't wait till the 24th. I need more Alex now. You can find her under our May Momentum Mental Health Series if you just search her name, Alex Cape. Bye, everybody. See you later. Bye. Thank you.